Hi, gang, and my radar meteorologist, Matt Cucci. You know, my radar friend, Sarah Tabor, is a high school biology teacher in Montana, and naturally, as a scientist, she has a pretty good scientific intuition. Last week, she knew she found something pretty special when she encountered this bizarre feature in the skies overhead. It looks pretty weird. It looks like something man-made. Now, the weather at the time was mostly sunny with high thin cirrus overhead and a few passing low-level cumulus clouds, but not many. There weren't any storms in the vicinity. Moreover, this thing was spinning rapidly, but it wasn't a funnel cloud. Instead, it's what we call a horseshoe vortex. Obviously, it gets its name because it looks like a horseshoe. I prefer to call it the mustache cloud. Horseshoe vortices are pretty rare, and finding one is very special. They form in rather curious ways. You need to generate a vortex. It usually starts horizontal with a change of wind speed and or direction with height. We call that wind shear. That makes an invisible tube. Then you need a localized updraft that punches through it only in the middle of the vortex, kind of lifting it and stretching it. That stretching intensifies a conservation of angular momentum. Think of the ice skater. When she spins her arms in, she spins faster. Same thing here. That is crucial in forming this horseshoe vortex. You also have to have just the right amount of moisture. You want dry ambient air, so of course you can see it, but enough moisture near the surface so that when you lift it, you condense that moisture within the tube. Since a vortex is characterized by low pressure, that actually helps to generate the cloud as does lifting moisture from lower in the atmosphere. They often form in convective environments, meaning flanking towering clouds or thunderstorms. Sarah's formed on a non-convective day, so I'm thinking she was probably near a mountain or something that kind of lifted or graphically a parcel there enough to get that updraft to punch through the vortex. Maybe there's also a lake nearby or some sort of moisture source that allowed to help that visibility of the vortex. These things can remain in a steady state or really a, a period of equilibrium for several minutes, meaning you can pause, watch them spin, and see how they evolve with time. Eventually, they get stretched into oblivion, sheared apart, and have an atmospheric tug of war or really just dissipate. It's natural. Here's an epic horseshoe vortex I found over Harvard Square in Cambridge back in 2018. This one lasted about three minutes and eventually became so thin it just withered away, only a few feet thick. Where there is one, there are usually several because horseshoe vortices like to come in families. Check out this stunning one I found in Ulysses, Kansas back in May of 2018. I saw five within a half hour in that heavily convective environment. Then we got some pretty good hailstorms after. Horseshoe vortices are actually an important thing in physics and fluid dynamics too. Engineers have to be cognizant of their development when they design piers, for example. All that to say, Sarah found something pretty special in those skies over Montana. Just goes to show you, no matter what you're doing, there's always beauty in the skies ahead. All you have to do is stop and look up. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.